Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, you can subscribe, share, and support wherever you are in the world, where you hear this in the digital space. You can subscribe online at tawahado.transistor.fm. You can subscribe through the Ephesus School network at fssschool.org. You can subscribe through the YouTube channel. There are a million things you can subscribe to. You can find them. Uh, I have links to them on toado.transfer and on the YouTube as well extensively. You can share the very words of God that you hear, and you can also share the link to wherever you found this set of words of God that are read aloud to you and recited to you by me. You can support by subscribing to the Substack, another thing to subscribe to, aksum.substack.com, or going over to patreon.com slash tawado. There is now the additional way of directly joining the YouTube channel, which is another way to support if you are so inclined. Today we are in the scroll of Apocalypse, the scroll of Uncovering, or the scroll of Revelation, chapter 15. It's a short one, just eight verses. So I'll do them in two sets, first one to four, then five to eight. Let us begin. We're here in the KJV to be friendly to all of the machines that are listening into us and searching for things that are in the public domain. Well, this is one of them. Verses 1 to 4. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the slave of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. As always, a lot going on. We'll focus on a few details and then go to the rest of the verses. First, there is a literary movement going on here, even though the chapters are not original. Within this chapter, you see at the beginning of the end of the talk of wrath and the talk of the wrath of God in the Hebrew original would have to do with his flaring nostrils. So picture and imagine the flaring nostrils of God, the wrath of God, which is the calm before the storm, which is the final judgment. And so here, it is an homage to judgment. It is a shadow of the forthcoming judgment of the world. We don't have an exact date. We don't have an exact time. But we can be certain that it is going to happen and that God will be the one who is the judge rendering the decision, which is called a judgment upon us all. And along with us, the beast will be judged. The beast's image will be judged. His mark will be judged. And the number of his name will be judged and they will be pitted against the harpists of God, singing this wonderful song that shows the unity of the Older Testament and the Newer Testament because it is represented by Moses and the Lamb. Of course, the Lamb and the Shepherd is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, representing the New Testament with himself, with his name, with his blood, with his whole being. And then you have Moses, who is, of course, a slave of God or a bondservant of God. But Moses is also a stand-in for the Pentateuch, which is the first, the, which are the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the word Torah is used loosely by very different groups for instruction. So it could mean the Older Testament in its entirety, the older and the new. And here we see the glorification of God through what? The marvelous glory of his appearance, not just this appearance, but his ways and his judgments, which are inclusive of the nations, inclusive of the Gentiles, inclusive of all peoples. 
and he alone is holy. He alone is unique. He alone is special. He alone is taboo and set apart and distinct and different. And so we go to verses five to eight. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened and the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of god who liveth forever and ever and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of god and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So beautiful. Again, there is the literary arrangement where the wrath of God is in the first section and the second section of this chapter, even though chapters are artificial. We get a view and a vision of the heavenly temple, and this number seven keeps coming up because seven is the number of perfection and the plagues here just like the wrath just like the nostrils all have to do with the judgment of god and we see the judgment of god although it is set for a future date that is unknown to us is here in completion in progress those of you of the internet age like me may have loaded or may have buffered various videos and sometimes maybe you've been more comfortable with those that show you what percentage is loading, what percentage is buffering. But sometimes you upload something on Facebook and it just loads and it doesn't tell you how long until it will be fully uploaded and then fully processed. They speak about this phenomenon in urban planning when they talk about buses and people waiting for buses. They say that people would rather wait 45 minutes for a bus if they get a message telling them that they have 45 minutes left than 15 minutes, but they're not told how long it's going to be. Because when you're not told it could be an hour, it could be three hours, your imagination runs wild, runs amok. And so we human beings want to control everything. We human beings we groundlings, we sons or children of the groundling of the Adam, who is the masculine version of the Adama. We human beings, we groundlings, we children of the groundlings, we sons and daughters of the groundling, we heirs of the groundling like to have certainty. We like to place our trust in ourselves. We like to be independent. And yet we have to face the fact that we are dependent beings. We depend upon the grace of God. For us to go to and fro, we depend upon his guidance. We depend upon him. And in the end, the loading, the buffering will be complete. The uploading and the processing will be complete. His judgment will be complete. And before that day, every breath that we take, is another opportunity, another chance, a second chance for us to repent and to turn towards the living God of Scripture. Glory be to him, and may our glory be carried to him alongside the glorification of the four beasts and all the angels of heaven.